This one I like. This one I even love more, though. Oh, That's one of my favorites. Yeah, Fatness Charm. So I'm just kind of going to scan through them all. Thanks, Courtney. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold on to that. There's three of these in one of inside there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. like signs. You used this on your piano too, didn't yeah. you? You just did that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so, um, hey everybody, I'm Trish and I have a cold. So, I thought, I thought you would much rather listen. And they even color coordinated their tops. And here at the Purple Painted Lady, what do we have? I'm Courtney. And I'm Hannah. Notice how Courtney says that as though she doesn't need an introduction. Yeah, I know Courtney. But. <laughs> um, get a little cozy. Get together. What are we doing? Show us what's going on today. So we are so excited to share all of the new Iron Orchid design products mm -hmm. we have. Um, we have a lot of transfers. I'm excited about the stamps as well, and then we're going to show you the molds that we carry. Awesome. Mary Ann from Syracuse is saying, Happy Friday, girls. I'm Happy so Friday. excited. It's Friday. Andrea's tuning in from California. Oh, Ooh. I love this one. Coco, I love your name. She's tuning in. Hello. <laughs> so I love that. Okay, so we, this is just some of what we have in house. Mm -hmm. So why don't you. What are we doing? Why don't you walk us through? Sure. So we've actually done a few Facebook Lives showing how to use the transfers, so I'm sure you can go back and find those. But we're just going to show you what we have um, and a couple of our favorites. Cool. So, cool. And those videos on how to use it, those are on YouTube also? Yeah, they awesome. Are. Perfect. Okay, Courtney, what do you want to do? So do you, you want to go through the transfers? Yeah, why don't you hold each okay. one up high so we can see it. Yep. So and this have... one, you just did this on your yes. piano? Yeah. I did. So What's I this think... called? Prim and trim. I prim think it was trim. designed, you're supposed to trim and use it as strips. You can do like borders. Yeah. I actually just used it as one solid piece and kind of distressed and made it look a little bit natural. Will you post a photo of your piano yeah. that you just did? In the comments. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're right. They're very versatile. They don't yeah. need to be used as is. Like in my interpretation, I probably would cut them each yeah. row. But you had a very large space on the bottom of your piano, and that's yeah. how you used it. And those are yeah. very nice. What colors are in this? They're like, they're muted colors. So there's like a dark uh, blue, olives, Peach. peaches, burgundies. Like a beige and beige, black. Beige, okay. black. So it's they're very more neutral. muted. Yeah. Okay, and this is the decor transfer, and it's called Prim and Trim, and it's uh, it says 24 by 33. Yeah. What is... What does so that mean in the sense of? It is 24 inches high mm -hmm. and 33 inches long. And this particular one, like Trish said, I used on my piano, but my piano was actually a good bit longer than that transfer itself. So you can layer multiple ones. And I actually took a second one, oh, cool. trimmed it, and did a portion on each side. So that was in the middle. Oh, I like that. Okay, so the other one that you used is called what? Astoria foliage and this one is actually a paintable transfer so with those it's um, just a black border and then uh, no color on the inside so if you chose you could take some paint and fill it in I actually just leave left it black and white so you can do that as well and I like how the um, paint color I had on my piano from underneath showed through. So when you say black and white, mm -hmm. is it technically white or is it just a black transfer? There's no color on the inside at all. So it's transparent there and then black borders. Okay, so whatever color is your base piece. Yeah. So if you used Florence chalk paint mm -hmm. or, um, you know, you did, well, this one over what color? Cocoa. Okay, so you did that over cocoa. And yeah. so that's, uh, it almost looks probably like the packaging then. Yeah. And then if you wanted to take an artist brush and fill in some of the um, areas with different colors, you could do that on the paintable ones. Maybe just thin the chalk paint mm -hmm. with a little water. Yeah. So that way it's a little bit more translucent. So Marianne in Syracuse said she just painted with Rodmel, which mm -hmm. is Good. Danny's um, new purple color. Courtney, you want to grab it? It's right behind me. And um, she used the transfer. Marianne, we're curious. What transfer did you use? Yeah. So this was the color Marianne said she painted with. Mm. And um, I love that. It's coming through a little bit brighter on the camera. It's really more of like a smoky aubergine or plum, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so those are two that we covered. If yep. you want, Court, you can throw them in the flower market bucket if you need to. Okay, cool. So, what's next? So, we actually posted a picture of, um, it was a little secretary dress 
desk one of our customers had done in the color Tilton chalk paint um, and they used the botanist journal transfer oh. over it this is probably um, I love that sunflower yeah a lot yeah. of us love the sunflower yeah. and it's like mixed media because they have this interesting type set um, behind mm -hmm. that has the dragonfly mm -hmm. and this is just one large sheet Yep. You it, can trim it and you can um, place the areas strategically wherever you want. You don't have to use it exactly as how it's designed. So you can layer them in certain areas. It's totally up to you. And again, this one is wider than it is tall. Yes. Would that be hard to trim those out? No. So it's just on a piece of like acetate. So almost like if you were to cut a piece of wax paper to put on a cookie sheet, mm -hmm. same process. They're very easy to trim down. Where's the one that we used at the home show this past weekend? Wildflower Botanicals. Okay, let's grab that. I'm just curious. So, um, Okay, so that one I really liked. I liked, I don't know why, the sunflower yellow. Yeah, it's That nice. would pop against the Florence. Or... And it's kind of worn on its own. So some oh. people will distress them with a little bit of sandpaper. Um, this one looks like it's just by itself a little bit distressed, but you could take sandpaper and make it even more. Where you see it distressed, mm -hmm. I noticed, Courtney, if you want to bring that one up into it, this one, same. It's hard to see. It's, here, it's slightly distressed. This one's called what again? This is the wildflower botanical. And this one really is meant to be yeah, sort of cut. individual, and then you yep. can apply them wherever you'd like. Yeah. But what I thought was neat about this, you might want to share when you put that on. Yeah. So. Um, there's actually sections in the flower that are already distressed through, meaning as you apply the transfer onto your painted piece, you're actually going to see the background color coming through in certain spots in the flower where they've already sort of faux distressed it. Like mm -hmm. they leave a void. They leave a void in like some areas where it looks like it might have been worn, might have been hit with a little bit of sandpaper. Okay, so this is the one that Marianne in Syracuse is using. Over rod melt. Hey. Over rod melt. Hey. I think nice. that's going to look awesome. Yeah, Heck definitely. Yeah. And you don't need to use all of them on one piece. No. In fact, we didn't, right? We only used uh, the white flowers and then the sunflowers. Correct. The and daisies what, and the sunflowers. What are some suggestions we might have in regards to if somebody's going to be using that in regards to the orientation of this, of the of the um, transfer? You know how like the curve might want to be on a corner or placement. Yeah. Any suggestions? I, just, I like to stay away from doing them like straight up and down or right in the middle of a piece. I kind of try to like angle them and layer them so it looks not just so textbook, I guess. Yeah, I guess. but really it comes to personal interpretation, yeah, right? Absolutely. But what here's the thing, when someone puts that on, if they don't like the placement, what's what's their option? You could sand it off. Sand. They're not terribly hard to get off. Um, but if you sand it, it's not like you can peel and restick. No. Right. It no. is done. Yeah. They made a commitment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. So um, when you're doing this, it's really nice to cut them out. Like we cut out individual flowers, and then we had a group of like two or three of us. Mm -hmm. We would actually put it near the dresser with the backing still on it, so we could place it where we wanted it to, a relative area, and then we kind of collaborated and decided, yeah, that's where we want to put it. Yeah. So it's really nice if you size it up first with the backing still on there, so you can kind of get an idea of what you're gonna get. Okay, so um, Nancy uh, Graco is asking if there's anything that has a, like a beach theme per se? Yeah, so this one, um, this is the Sea Queen transfer, and we actually have a dresser painted in old white that we did this one over. Um, so this I is say, smaller though. Yeah, this is the small one. It does come in a larger size though. So some do, and yeah. so we, they'll be, make sure you pay attention when they yeah. order. Mm -hmm. um, and also... Um, Deanna's asking, like, what are some of the price ranges? And obviously that can vary mm -hmm. from store to store. Right. Yeah. But what do ours usually run between? Ten to twenty-eight ninety-nine. Yeah. Ten dollars so for the small ones, and mm -hmm. twenty-eight ninety-nine for the larger else. ones. Um, the ones that have color, and even some of the paintable ones are twenty-eight ninety-nine. Some of the smaller ones are lower in price. Like Courtney said, they start at ten dollars and go yeah. up. And are these at all our locations? Yes. yes. And um, where else can people purchase them? They can purchase them on our website, on our shopping cart. We ship all over the country, so we can definitely ship them to you. And hopefully, if not, they might have somebody local. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, we always encourage people to visit your local stockist for all the products. They'll be able to help you in person and give you lots of knowledge. If you're planning on visiting one of our stores and you're not sure if the transfer is there, you can always give us a call too. Yeah. So if you have a transfer in mind that you want to know if it's in Greece or Syracuse or wherever, you can always give us a call first and we can let you know if it's already there or not. Yeah. So Anne asked, will you please show us 
a diminished product. Maybe finished? I bet you it's finished. finished. Oh, finished. So, so, like the so do you want to, can you lead me? Yeah. And I'll go slow because sometimes if I spin too fast, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to get vertigo. Yeah. So I mentioned the Sea Queen transfer we did on a dresser that we painted an old white chalk paint by Annie Sloan. And that one is right over here. We got a paint delivery yesterday, so we're a little discombobulated. Okay. Um, we're just going to move a few things aside. But this is our kind of beach mermaid display. Um, it's kind of hard to see because the window's right behind and it's <laughs> really bright. But yeah. um, see, so now that's the larger Sea Queen. Yep. And um, that I love. So like this area is where we would have taken a little bit of sandpaper and distressed it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I don't see anywhere else on this one. Yeah. I think what was cool on this piece itself mm -hmm. is we had a little bit of bleed through down there. But it looks, it actually looks very weathered. Yeah. It works with the vibe. Yeah. And what did we do on this piece? We painted it first with, old I think. Old white. Old white. The core of old white. I thought it was we the graphite first. I don't think so. It looks like it. Oh, it yeah. Been. It looks like we did a coat of graphite um, and then old white on top and distressed to so show some of the wood, but also some of that graphite color as well. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. I didn't mean to tear you away, but that's okay. So hopefully, um, I think Deanna asked to see a finished piece. Mm -hmm. And so that gives you an idea. We also have a couple other finished pieces on the other side of the shop. Um, obviously before we ever even knew about IOD transfers, we used to just hand paint all our designs and we still do depending upon if it's an image that we want. I wonder if someday IOD might have the ability to use for people to submit and they can customize a transfer. Yeah. That'd be really cool. That would be so amazing. Yeah. So, okay. So what else do we have in the sense of transfers to just go through? Well, so we do have... This one right here that we actually said in the beginning of the video is actually three separate transfers all in one. Um, so I believe they're separate strips yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and then you can, they're called, it's for like signs, but I this think you could use This would be fun it. to do a home party with. Yeah. Just to go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, your big box store, get a yeah. nice piece of wood, separate it. You could have some people over. Yeah. You could purchase probably sample pots of paint. Yeah. You wouldn't need much paint. That one actually reminds me of this one as well, um, which that's two separate pieces. Oh yeah, that you would it's layer together. Yep. Um, so that one would be good for a longer. So size. this one is 60 inches long. Yeah. These then are 24 inches long. Yeah, this one's really long. It's misleading because it's in a smaller container. I know. This what one, is that one called? Stores, Stores and Harrison. Okay. It would be really good for like a long buffet. Oh and yeah. And you don't have to do the whole piece. So if you want to pick a section to do, if you wanted to like n choose not to do that part, you could stop it there and maybe right before that border. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. There's a lot. And then you know what? You save that. For and, another piece. Or you could stick it on the top corner. Yeah. Or if you had multiple pieces in one room. Yeah. I had a little bit left over from the black and white transfer I did on my piano. And I took a little bit of it and did it on a shelf in Nora's room, my daughter. So. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll bring Nora out in a little bit. Yeah. So, Okay. So that one there was called uh, Farm Fresh Signs. Yeah. yeah. Yours was called? Stores and Harrison. Okay. Great. Cool. Okay. I really like the ones with a lot of color on them. Uh -huh. um, so this one is actually kind of similar to the Wildflower Botanical ones in the sense that it's really meant to be trimmed. Um, some of them are facing up and some are down, so they're meant to be trimmed and kind of layered however you'd like. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah, so this one's called Redoubt 4. Okay, and you can use more than one transfer. Yeah, so if you liked this one and the Wildflower Botanicals, you could or mix this. in some of the flowers. Trisha's saying it would be nice to take like some of the words from this one and layer flowers over it. It's really, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so, <coughs> pardon me. This one, um, you said redoubt for. Yeah. Yep. And then what is this one? This looks very... That one's called Be Thou My Vision. I think... That's I'll gorgeous. just read it. Be Thou My Vision, O... Oh, Lord of my heart. I think it's a Bible verse. I'm not exactly yeah. sure. When was the last time you went to church, young lady? Ooh. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, so this Ooh. one is very inspirational. It's definitely Christian based. It's beautiful. I think that would look gorgeous on a mirror. Yeah, and we actually have a mirror behind us here that we did um, a transfer over. We painted the outside, the frame, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. um, the transfer actually matches really well with the color that we chose. 
Um, <laughs> tell me about the frame. So the frame used to be like a bright gold. Um, I'm sure you've seen a frame like this in an antique store. I think I got this at TJ Maxx, to yeah. be honest with you. So this is um, a color scheme that I used a lot. So yeah. it's a base of Han Fleur, which is like a milk chocolate brown. Um, and then a layer of French linen, which is like a taupey gray, and then um, a wash with old white. So you take equal parts paint and water with a wash, you brush it on, and then you kind of wipe back strategically, leaving almost like a, a haze. Um, and then just kind of lightly sand to distress. Okay, so um, not to get off track, because I do that to you guys all the time, <laughs> but the transfers look wonderful on a mirror. Yeah. Any um, tips, though, regarding that? So, like, when you have to going forward regarding you know cleaning or anything yes you want to definitely make sure you clean the mirror really well otherwise you could get like dirt particles or dust underneath the transfer which is not good so prior but what about um, ongoing maintenance because you probably don't want to yeah I wouldn't use Windex no. or anything I would take like a dusting rag um, don't apply too much pressure and again don't use like Windex or a spray product directly maybe just put it yeah. on the rag and then wipe around as yeah. best you can really light okay Okay, what else do you have? Because these are really pretty, and I want to make sure everyone yeah. sees them. So this guy is four different sections. I think they would be nice on, like, smaller mirrors. Some people even do them on, like, a canvas and frame them. Um, or a smaller piece of furniture, cabinets. Again, this is a wide piece of acetate, and there's individual pieces. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You know, this is great when you have somebody with the kitchen. And they have those very flat, yeah. non-architectural no doors. I don't know if we have any back have here. Any. No, all of ours. <laughs> I try not to have them because they're not very aesthetically, you know. Yeah, so amazing, yeah. something like that would look great. Um, maybe one higher up, one down in a corner. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you really could use this on your kitchen. And yeah. then um, something we didn't bring out today, but that also could be used, are the knob toppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, those might be some of the ones we need to order more of, but the knob toppers are like little circular stamps. If you have like really plain round wooden knobs, you could press a design with a stamp on those and add like a little bit of an accent. Yep, and we piece. have those those knobs on our website too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's actually wooden little knobs people can paint and decorate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, so this is another one that I think would be nice to trim and strategically use or obviously just use the whole piece as one. It's got a lot going on, a lot of different colors. There's a peacock there and some flowers. Um, so it would be really nice, I feel like, on a dresser. Midnight or, Garden. Yeah. Nice. I, I feel like there's another Annie Sloan Stockis, um, and there's a bunch of us, so I can't yeah. always remember their names. And they may have um, used this on a... A wall uh, uh, behind their cash register. Ooh, it's very nice. pretty. Sweet. Just have like a shelf at the bottom yeah. of it, and when I guess the shelf. And yeah, that'd be really cool. This could also look really cool, and I wonder how well it would stick, like in a powder room, yeah. maybe behind a vanity, yeah. not just on furniture, but on the wall. So um, the usual, the typical instructions would be to paint whatever you're going to paint do the transfer and then seal it with wax or whatever top coat you're going to use. Um, sometimes they say not to use polyurethane, but some of our customers have and I it's think, worked fine. I think it's kind of, you should yeah. always do a test area to make sure. Yeah. I think um, some people are mentioning they'd like to use the Artisan Enhancements clear clear top coat sealer or the clear finish I've seen someone say. I've used clear top coat sealer and it's beautiful. So what I did on my piano though, the main section that was cocoa underneath mm -hmm. was not top coated at all. I did the transfers and then I used Annie Sloan's clear wax over it. There was an area that was previously waxed and it's been cured for a while. So I did a little test area and I actually did the transfer over the cured wax and it held up fine. It it adhered and everything. I just did another layer of wax over that area. Okay. Awesome. Over something like a wall, Iron Orchid says you don't need to top coat it because mm -hmm. typically a wall doesn't receive that much torture, I yeah. would say. Um, so you don't usually need to worry about it. Um, and they've also said in the past that uh, Steam doesn't usually have an issue with the um, transfers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So what's left? We got these two black and white ones, which are both paintable transfers. You, again, if you put them on, you can also come back with a little bit more paint mm -hmm. and go through and fill them in. So, yeah. 
We had a customer in the store yesterday that liked the idea of floral, but not so much the farmhouse look. So she actually purchased this one with the idea of trimming off the wording and just using that floral part and going back with a little paint to fill it in. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're not committed. They can You can take these and interpret oh, yeah. them and yeah. Cut them. customize them however you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can maximize them. So yeah. especially if it's somebody who paints pieces, they can, you know, maybe get a few pieces out of one transfer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, maybe they come up with, if like some of our artists in our festival, they might come up with a, uh, um, maybe a, a plan of colors, mm -hmm. um, a scheme, and maybe they're going to go with roses. It would yeah. be really cool. I'm excited to see what else comes out if they, if IOD comes out with seasonal themes. Yeah. Springtime, little bunnies. Yeah. Fall, <laughs> winter, yeah. you know, the whole thing. So, yeah. Okay, so that's fantastic. Thank yeah. you for showing us those. So what else? So these are the stamps, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. um, we actually just talked about earlier maybe wrapping a present in some plain paper, like a brown craft paper, and oh, then yeah. using the stamps to personalize a gift for someone. I love that. That would be nice. And you can use any any chalk paint color. Yeah. Or you can yeah. use ink, whichever you Definitely. prefer, right? Yeah. So one that's very popular right now is this barnwood planks. So people do them on floors, they do it on a dresser top to give it the faux wood grain that they're looking for. Um, if you use a black ink or even the Han Fleur colored chalk paint, which is a milk chocolate brown, um, to make it look like wood, even though it's maybe plastic or veneer or anything really. Anything you paint it. Yeah, definitely. And what's really cool about this is I love the idea of making it look like wood but in a non-traditional color. Yeah. Yeah. Like you That'd could you could go over so I'm going back to sort of to this mirror, right? Where mm -hmm. you did the Han floor and the French linen and the old white wash. Yeah. Actually, Courtney, can you grab that cabinet right there, the very first one down the little one to the right of you? Um so this was that exact same Yeah, technique. Yeah, where you use those colors. Yep. So you could actually come back and do more of a weathered barn wood yeah, type of wanted. effect. A lot of people they're <laughs> main hold back from painting furniture is they don't want to lose the wood grain. So if you paint it whatever color you want and then do the wood grain over it, it's kind of a compromise, I guess. And this is brilliant for some people who have a lodge or a cottage and they don't want to go out and spend a ton of money. They yeah. can literally get um, sheets of uh, wood. What do you call Oh, uh, slab? Like no, like, you know, a plywood. Oh, yeah. plywood. <laughs> yeah. And you can paint it and actually make it look like yeah, definitely. strips of wood. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, very cool. So that's so this is called Barnwood Planks. Okay. And those are on our website? Yep. And so when they purchase it, mm -hmm. they get one sheet. Is that how it works? It comes packed. Some of them are different. So this one is one sheet with two stamps. Um, the typesetting mm -hmm. one, for instance is multiple sheets because they couldn't fit the whole alphabet on one sheet <laughs> <laughs> and there's lowercase on a separate sheet so this yeah. is a few two sheets with all the different letters and obviously they're all one sheet so do you how do you so what do you do i actually opened this one to do a little bit of a demo which one is that what's the name of this, this one this one is called royal rose toil 12. 12. Ro rose 12. <laughs> So this is a very, very, yes. you know, so, common type of pattern on fabric. Yeah. It's, you know. So it's two sheets of acetate, um, and then the stamps are within the two sheets. So what I do is actually peel back the one layer, and then this is kind of up to your discretion as well, but what I would do is cut out the one that I want to use. Be very careful. Okay. And then I've got, this is actually the packaging that the stamps came in. So it's just a sheet of plastic. You could use or you paper could use plate. wax paper. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, this so is what called, was that? This is the um, decor ink. And this is called a brayer. So I'm just going to use this to roll some ink on. And then I'm going to take my stamp. Are those on our website? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to take my stamp, offload a little bit of ink, and just roll some ink right on there. And I guess if they didn't hit a, a brayer, um, they could just use a sponge and sort of yeah. dab the ink yeah, on if they wanted, right? I imagine you could just lay it flat in there and offload a little bit of it before you use it on the paper. But the brayer definitely, obviously. It does help. 
Court, you want to go grab maybe some wet wipes for Hannah? She's not as neat as you. <laughs> and then I would just take it and um, press it onto the paper or whatever piece of furniture. I feel like that has a little bit. Oh, did, it did come out. I okay. did have a little bit too much ink on this guy. I think you had just the right amount with the brayer. Yeah. But when you when put I it into the it. ink. But that's okay. That's, you know, hey, it's live. I'm going to use, I think, this dragonfly here next. And you know what's interesting is you don't need to use just ink. You can use chalk whatever paint. your favorite paint is. Yeah. Obviously, we love chalk paint, but, you know, whatever you have, um, you can use acrylic craft paint. Yeah, definitely. You know, so um, you could do a whole present. You could use metallic paint. Yeah. I, didn't think I like that idea. You know, like gold metallic on yeah, the brown craft like paper would look yeah. pretty slick. So this one I just used the brayer. Didn't dip this guy. Oh, yeah, pretty very cool. cool. Gives you an idea. These yeah. are so much fun. They are. I think the options and ideas are endless. It takes you back to being a kid. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It really allows people to be much more creative. Um, okay, so that one that you just shared yes. was, again... Rose, Rose Twall. Okay. I'm learning. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> can we talk about this one? Because... Yeah. I am thinking about the possibility of doing that in my... Backsplash? Yeah, well, actually, yeah. my mudroom, my floor. Oh, nice. Ooh. So you could, again, use chalk paint in whatever color if you wanted to. It would be a lot quicker, a lot easier than a, um, a stencil. And then I imagine you would just use a floor lacquer. Annie Sloan makes a really great lacquer um, in a matte finish, so it's very flat. Mm -hmm. um, that would be very protective. I love that. Yeah. What is the dimension of that? This one is 12 by 12 total. The smaller squares, so it's four different sections, those are four by four. So Joe Larson is asking, are these called transfers? These ones are stamps. <coughs> what we showed previously, um, the designs on a sheet of acetate that you just transfer on, those are called the transfers. Okay. So, um, uh, perfect. Um, let's go through the rest so that way we make sure we have enough battery. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the next stamp we're going to show... Um, I really like this one. It's more of like a, I imagined it in a bakery. It's very French. It has bees and little um, bows, crowns. It's very nice, very regal. That's awesome. So, and you don't have to use them all, and you can, that's just, I love the bee. So, and once you've used it with the ink, mm -hmm. what do you do? Do you have to you wash them? How do you, are they reusable? Yeah, so they're definitely reusable. Um, I would just rinse it off, um, and then I would put, so the first piece of acetate we peeled off um, in the demonstration, I would just put that right back over the top and store it like that. Okay, very good. Um, go right ahead and show us that one. We have some script here. This one, I actually, I'm not sure I would try and cut this one up. Oh, this I wouldn't cut whole this whole right sheet. Now. So I would, I would leave this one just whole. Um, it's called Kindest Regards. To me, this would be fantastic to use this as a stamp, let it dry, and then put some of the transfers Transfer on top it. of it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be absolutely. really nice. I'm sure I'm not creating the wheel there. I'm sure somebody else has <laughs> done that multiple times over. And yeah. actually, can you just show the back of that, Courtney? Because sure. they give nice. an example. Can you flip that over? So that's over like a, it looks um, like just an antique a printer's piece, cabinet, yeah. I guess yes, they call it. Yes, like a typesetter's cabinet. Yeah. I love how they did that. Yeah, definitely. This one's called Branch Birds, Branches, and Blossoms. Mm. Uh, the name says it all. It's just birds, branches, and blossoms. Individual flowers, <laughs> yep. And this obviously looks great when you sort of, sort of create the whole branch coming yeah, up on a, absolutely. on a piece. So, so um, the last product we want to show you that we're really excited about is the decor molds. So these, um, Iron Orchid Designs creates their own clay that you could use in it. I personally would use chocolate in it <laughs> and make little chocolate shapes. <laughs> You would. I know you would, too. <laughs> yeah, but with the clay, you would um, press it just firmly all the way into the mold. Um, it's an air-dry clay, so you don't have to do anything to accelerate the dry time. The air will harden it. Um, I didn't do too much research on the amount of time it takes to dry. Um, I think once you press the um, also the air-dry clay, maybe take like a little spatula yeah, and kind of level it off. Make it nice and flat because yep. 
you are going to adhere that onto something. So you want to have yeah. a nice smooth edge. Definitely. Fantastic. So yeah. um, I think what we need to do next mm -hmm. is um, do a video. I think one, um, we have the transfers. We already did that. We can share that, but I think a transfer would look nice on the glass part of this um, grandfather. Oh block. yeah, yeah, that would look fantastic. Yeah, definitely. so we can definitely do something like that. Yeah, maybe we'll do that like next yeah, week or so something. Yeah, so we'll do videos showcasing and um, doing kind of t tutorials on how to use each product. Maybe Courtney will tag team with me. So Kitty was asking, um, are you going to be showing us how to use a transfer? So where can she find that? So on our YouTube channel, um, we have, I'm not sure the exact title, but how to use transfers. We have, I know we've done at least two videos. I know there's Facebook one on our YouTube live. channel. Um, if you go back through our previous Facebook lives, they are on there as well. And you know what we'll do in the next week on our website? We'll add a header called videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll put a link for every one. Yeah. If you're ever unable to find the video or you're looking for one of them and you're looking for a, a while to try to find it, you can always just shoot us a message and say, I'm looking yeah. for this, and we can always link you to it. Send you How do they link. shoot you a message? Right on our page, there's a button that says send message. So you click that, and you yeah. can send us a private message that way. I'm on not so good at Facebook, so <laughs> if you want to email us as well, the purple yes. painted lady at gmail.com. Um, that's a good way to contact us as well. Correct. And then they also ask, where on the website are they available? So what is the website yeah. URL that they should go to for so, the... Yeah, so if you go to shop.thepurplepaintedlady.com, that will direct you right to our shopping cart. If you're on our regular website, I think has like a purple background, it's more of our blog. Um, that actually has a little tab that says buy chalk paint here and that also has our other products yeah. on that link. And then once they're on the shopping cart, um, on the left under categories, I yeah. think it says... It says transfers and molds and stamps as well. They're all under one category. Right, but they can always call you if they need to place an order. Definitely. Absolutely. We take orders over the phone all day long at 585 Seven five zero six zero five six. <laughs> Maybe you'll get lucky enough to have one of us answer. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next Friday. Yeah.